Yay! Yay! All right, let's look at a really interesting example of two objects colliding elastically. Um, in this case, it'll be uh, like a tennis ball and a basketball. Um, and you get some, uh, some, some neat results that, that are a little bit surprising. Um, here is the idea. Um, I'm going to start um, the basketball, the big M, and the tennis ball is above it, little m. Uh, I'm going to start them out at some height uh, h, where they both fall the same height h. Uh, and then the basketball is going to hit the ground and rebound upwards and then hit the tennis ball, which is still on its way down. Um, in fact, uh, we just reproduced this outside. Let's see if I can uh, get this to work. Um, so here comes the tennis ball. Uh, not exactly elastic, right? It doesn't go back up to the height from which it dropped. So this is not ideal. There's a crazy dog. Uh, and then there's the basketball, still not elastic. Um, but if you put one on top of the other, uh, then what happens? Boom! Then the tennis ball rockets up to um, a height significantly above where it took off, um, even with these uh, non-totally elastic uh, objects. It still works. Okay, so let's see what's going on. Um, what happens is, uh, as little m is coming down, when it reaches that point, it's got a speed v, and, and we'll figure out what v is later, how v depends on the height. Um, and the basketball, at some point, the basketball hits the ground and rebounds, we're gonna say, perfectly elastically. So we'll take the, the, the limit. Uh, and it rebounds upwards, also at a speed v, right? Because it's fallen the same same height. Uh, so you've got the big ball traveling up at speed v and the little ball traveling down at speed v. And then they're going to collide elastically. So um, how are we going to treat this? Uh, we're going to use the trick that we've already used before, which is um, transforming into the frame where, in this case, the little ball, the tennis ball, is at rest. Uh, so how are we going to do that? Uh, the little ball at rest, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add a speed v going up, right? Because that'll cancel the speed going down. That'll give the little ball speed zero. And then if we add v going up to the big ball, that means that this guy, the big one, is going to have a speed of 2v. Uh, I don't mean to say that the little ball has speed v. So the little ball, if I add, oops. If I add a speed v, um, then the little ball speed is going to cancel out to zero, and the big ball speed is going to be 2v then in this, in this frame. And then we could go ahead and use the equations that we had before. And the equation we had before was... Uh, the speed in this, I'll, I'll call it V prime. This is in the special rest frame of the tennis ball. Uh, v prime of the tennis ball uh, is going to be twice the speed of the thing coming in divided by the sum of the masses times the speed of the thing coming in, which in this frame we're saying is 2V, right? So that's the speed. Uh, so that's going to be what, 4mv over the sum of the masses. Okay, um, and so now we need to transform back to see what it's like in sort of the lab frame, the outside frame uh, that we started with. So how do we get into this frame? We added a v going up. So how do we get back out of the frame? Now that we know our answer, we subtract the v. Okay, so this means the speed that we're interested in, the speed of the tennis ball after the collision, uh, is just going to be 4mv over m plus m uh, minus v. There we go. So all we had to do is subtract out the v, and now we're back uh, to the sort of the camera frame from outside. Um, I want to get this all in terms of v, all right? So let's rewrite this in a little bit better way. So I'm going to have 4 mv over the sum of the masses minus v. I'm going to multiply by the denominator uh, in sort of a well-chosen one. Uh, so I'm going to have this on the top and then this on the bottom, right? So I can subtract these two things. Uh, and what I'm going to be left with when I do this, 4mv minus mv, so I'm going to have a 3mv um, minus 
uh, let's see, this is going to be over m plus little m. I'm going to have 3mv minus, let me factor out the v, so it's a 3m minus m times v, like that. All right, so there I go. So, so, so there's the speed um, of uh, the little ball. Um, now, it's in terms of the speed that it had going down. Um, how fast was it going uh, when it got down to that, after falling from that height h? Uh, after falling from h, um, we did this a long time ago. Um, up at the top, it had kinetic energy one half mv squared. Uh, oops, that's totally wrong, isn't it? At the top, it had potential energy mgh, and at the bottom, it had kinetic energy one half mv squared. So the m's cancel. So the speed is going to be square root of 2gh. Okay, so there it is, depending on the height. So the speed of this thing is going to be 3 big M minus little m over the sum of the masses. And then this is going to be the square root of 2gh. So now it depends on the height, the original height that it was dropped with, or dropped from. Um, all right. So one question, um, this is the way it's usually phrased when I've seen this example. How high will the ball go? Uh, in terms of its original height. So let's figure that out. So how high will it go? Um, what we're really saying is that if it starts off with that speed v, um, how high will it go until that v uh, is zero? And what we did a long time ago was in kinematics, we said that uh, sort of a final speed squared is the initial speed squared minus 2g delta y, right? Um, so that when it reaches the top, when it stops, when it reaches its maximum height, that final speed is zero. So uh, that means that the height that it goes, delta y, uh, is just v squared, the initial speed when it starts going up, uh, divided by 2g. Um, well, this v initial, the speed that it has when it starts going up, is just that speed. That's that's the speed the tennis ball has when it starts going back up. Um, okay, so let's see what this height's going to be then. So our delta y uh, is going to be v squared. So I've got this 3 big M minus little m over the sum of the masses. Um, and then I square the square root, right? So I got 2g, and this is going to be over 2g. Oops. And then I got my h. There we go. So it just depends on, oops, I got to square this thing. So it just depends um, on the squared factor, and then it depends on the initial height. Um, all right, let's put some numbers in. Let's see, let's see how this works. Uh, so... For a basketball, I think I used big M. I wrote it down here somewhere, 625 grams. Little m, the tennis ball, is 58 grams. Um, and just for kicks, let's just say H. Well, let's just find it in terms of H then. So when you put those numbers in, what you get is delta Y is 7.08 times h. So if you drop them from a meter high, this says that the tennis ball will be launched seven meters high. Um, well, we didn't quite get that far in the video, right? It, it maybe was 2h, but these were non-ideal balls anyway. Um, but this is the maximum possible. If these were perfectly elastic with this mass differential, uh, that's what we get. Um, one other thing we can do is what's the, what's the biggest height that you can imagine is when you have the biggest discrepancy between the masses of the balls, right? When big M is way bigger than little m. So we can figure that out. When big M is way, way bigger than little m, uh, look at that ratio. What we've got is uh, the little m doesn't even matter anymore. And so we're just going to have 3m, 3 big M over big M. That's just 3. And 3 squared is 9. So this means that our delta y max is 9h. That's pretty neat. So... Uh, this effect where something rebounds off of something else, you can get a maximum of nine times the original height 
um, which is a little surprising, really. Um, I mean, it's not obvious to me that things could could actually bounce this high. Um, but this is a this is a really interesting result um, and kind of a fun example.